there's not much known about our man, but that when he was studying to become a priest, he became a Protestant and fell under the leadership of a man by the name of George Wishart. George Wishart was a fiery man and would preach to crowds at a time in public and would call them to repentance, to believe in the one true gospel. One of these times, George Wishart called the man and said to him that he would become his next in line and would take up the mantle of responsibility after him. Shortly after, George Wishart was burned at the stake and our man, as timid as he was, became a minister of the gospel. As our man became the life force of the Protestants in Scotland, he began preaching at St. Andrews in Edinburgh. And shortly after, the French galleys pulled up to Edinburgh and stormed the castle and took all of those inside as slaves to row on their ships. And for nearly 20 months, our man sat at the bottom of a ship and rowed for the French and would frequently pass by and see the St. Andrew's steeple where he once preached. When he was released, he immediately fled to England and joined the Reformation there, preaching for a few short years under the new king, Edward VI, who was favorable to the Protestants. But when Edward VI died, a new queen came to power. Mary Tudor would later be known as Bloody Mary. She reinstituted the mass and began persecuting the Protestants. And so our man had to flee and he even had to flee the island itself into Europe. And so deep into Switzerland, he began to hide and then studied under the French reformer, John Calvin. After being emboldened and instructed in the doctrines of the Bible that had been hidden for centuries by the Roman Catholic Church, our man returned from Geneva, Switzerland to the island, inflamed more than ever, and preached harder than he had ever done before against the Roman heresies, against the Queen, and began setting up the truth of the Word of God in his native Scotland. Now the queen was going to marry the son of the king of Spain, a Catholic prince. Our man began to criticize the marriage as they held a private mass for the ceremony. This infuriated the man as the mass was an abominable act and an insult to the sacrifice of Christ. When Mary heard of this, she summoned the man to him and asked him what his criticisms of her marriage were. And as he stood there, she began to weep. And he said to her, Madam, in God's presence, I speak. I never delighted in the weeping of any God's creatures. Yea, I can scarcely well abide the tears of my own boys whom my own hands correct. Much less can I rejoice in your majesty's weeping. In his later years, he preached still, even through the vicious Scotland Civil War. And when he died, it was discovered in his home that next to his bed were two little divots for his knees as he prayed the night in the cobblestone floor. And on his grave, it read, 
Here lies one who feared God so much that he never feared the face of any man. And that man became the founder of Presbyterianism. We call him John Knox.